Hi, I'm Miss Roz. Today we are going to learn how to make custard um, with eggs. One of the questions always is, what's the difference between pudding and eggs? Pudding is typically made with um, either flour or cornstarch as your only thickening agent. However, custard uses eggs as well as flour or cornstarch. All right, so today let's get ready to see what we're making. Um, so I have all of my equipment ready to go. Um, so here is my small saucepan, and then I have a small bowl for you to do this in. I also need some custard cups or small bowls. Um, I, have, I have a couple of um, cups to put my custard into, a liquid measuring cup, solid measuring cups, measuring spoons, and a whisk. And then I also have all of my ingredients ready, so I have flour, sugar, milk, vanilla and some eggs. Okay? So let's get going here. First thing we need to do is make sure that we are measuring all of our um, food. All right, so let's start with the milk. All right, the milk is a liquid, so I am going to use my liquid measuring cup, which looks just like this. All right, um, now I need a cup of milk. So what I want to do is I want to pour it so that I get to the line that says one cup. Right, so there's that line when you make a liquid called the meniscus, right? Same word that you would see in, um, in your, the, the word that they have for your uh, that part in your knee, right? That kind of makes a it kind of makes a bowing, okay? Um, right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my milk, right? And you want to watch for the top of the liquid. Right, to get to that one cup mark, right? Um, so that meniscus, right? That little part that shows um, at the very top of your liquid, right? You want to measure to the bottom of that meniscus, right? So that's my one cup of milk, right? I also need um, three tablespoons of some flour, right? So when I go to Measure my flour. Right, typically they say not to scoop the flour, but because I am using just a very small amount, um, I am going to scoop, but generally they don't want you to. Um, when I, if I were doing cups of flour, I would, um, I would spoon this in, but since I am using small amounts, it's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop my flour, right, and then I'm going to uh, level it off, right. So that's one tablespoon, right, and then two, and then one more, right. So my flour is one of my thickening agents, which is going to help um, bring my custard together so that it's not um, super liquidy, right. Um, so flour, right, I also need a half a cup of some sugar, okay, so I'm going to take my half a cup, right, and do the same thing, I'm going to scoop and, and level, and take my half a cup, Right, and then I actually need two, two eggs. It says, though, I need one egg and one yolk. Right? So that means I'm going to need two bowls to be able to do this. Because I need a bowl to put my eggs into, and then I'm going to need a bowl to put my yolks into. All right? Okay, so I'm going to separate my first egg. Right? There's a lot of, you know, a lot of people always ask, like, oh, can I just use the water bottle or whatever? But what happens if you don't have a water bottle when you go to do this? Right? So I find the easiest way to do this is just to use your hands. Right? So what's going to happen is I'm going to crack the egg. I'm going to pour it into my hand, and I'm going to let the egg white um, seep through, and I'm going to hold the yolk in my palm and put the yolk into this other one. Right? So like this. Okay, so crack it open. Okay, yes, your hands are going to get a little messy. Okay, and then you're just going to let it slip through. The, what you want to make sure is that you do not get the yolk into the white. 
right? And so then my yolk is going to go over there. And then I am going to wash my hands. Okay. Um, and so now I'm going to set aside my egg whites because I don't actually need the egg whites for today. Um, so you, if you um, want to just scramble up some eggs and put that egg white in there, go for it. Um, and then you got um, and one more egg because it says I need a yolk and one more egg. All right. So. All right. And then the last thing is I need vanilla. Right. And typically when I have to work with vanilla, especially in baking, I actually will just add my vanilla to my egg. Okay. Because this is the only liquid thing other than my milk. Um, that I have to work with. All right, so um, I always pour with my dominant hand, so I'm righty. So I'm going to pour with my right hand. And it says I need a teaspoon, right? And then pour that in. All right, so that means that I have all of my um, ingredients all ready to go. And this is what we call my mise en place measuring. Right, so that means that I have everything and that the only thing I need to do is then cook. Right? Um, in your kitchen, right, this is one of the things that you need to take a picture of. Right? So I'm going to just grab my phone so that I can make sure I take a picture of this. Right. Now, if you were doing the chocolate one, you would, instead of measuring out the flour, you would measure out the cornstarch, um, and then you also would be measuring out some um, cocoa powder. Right. Um, we're going to do the vanilla one today instead. Right. So now it tells me I need to what we call scald my milk. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right, turn on my pan, or sorry, my so like my so small sauce pot. Right? Um, but scalding means just to bring it up to a heat. You want to heat it up, but I don't want to burn it. So you want to be somewhere in the medium to medium high range because I don't want to burn it, but I do want it to, um, I do want it to be hot. Right? I want it to be warm. Right? So I poured my milk into there. Right? And so what I'm going to notice is that when I start to see some bubbles, Right? I don't want big bubbles. I just want the little tiny, tiny bubbles. Um, that means that it's going to be ready to go. All right? um, you'll also be able to, to smell it while you're cooking. Right? While I'm waiting for that milk to heat, right, I'm going to mix all my other ingredients together. So I'm going to take that sugar that I just measured out, okay, and then I'm going to take the flour that I measured out, right? All right? And then I'm actually going to, before I mix anything else in there, I'm going to just mix this around, right? This helps. Um, if you mix the flour or the cornstarch with the sugar, it helps to prevent it from clumping together when you start to add liquids to the bowl. Okay. So number one, I'm whisking it together to, to break up any clumps, um, but I'm also whisking it together to incorporate it all together. All right. And then I also um, need to, I want to scramble this egg a little before I add it. So I'm actually going to take, because it's such a small bowl, I'm going to take a fork and just mix it together a little. Okay. And then throw that into my sugar flour mixture. And then I'm going to mix this together. And this is going to create kind of a paste-like, uh, like an eggy paste, right? And what I really am trying to do is I'm trying to help dissolve that sugar, right? So mixing that sugar together with a liquid, such as my egg, um, it helps to dissolve your sugar so that it doesn't, um, it's not all clumpy, right? Um, so if you have any, I'm trying to just break up, I had a little clump of sugar in there. So I'm just trying to break up that clump of sugar. Okay. And so you should have a nice kind of pale yellow-ish um, mixture here. I'm just waiting for that milk to heat up a little. All right, now, when we made eggs before in the last couple of weeks, 
right? Um, we were talking about just cooking eggs standard, right? We had been, we had scrambled eggs, we had fried eggs, we had poached eggs, and then you also made an omelet. Um, and so in all of those are egg solidified, right? And if you remember the term coagulate, right? We had the egg coagulate. We had it become a solid, right? However, when you make custard, right, you want it, this is actually kind of the, the, the texture that you're going to want it to be at. Right, and so we don't want the egg to solidify, right? We don't want it to coagulate, as they say. Instead, okay, we want it to remain a liquid, right? Because we don't want scrambled eggs in the middle of our custard. Right? And so one of the key elements of doing this is to call what we temper, right? To temper an egg. And to temper an egg means to bring up the, the heat of my egg up very slowly so that it does cook right however it remains a liquid okay so um so we want to do what we call temper an egg okay so i'm just going to continue mixing this uh my milk is starting to come along i know it's hard to see in some of these demonstrations um but you might be able to see that the kind of um there's starting to become some little bubbles in the inside um, and that's kind of a typical sign that it is starting to heat up and to do what we call scalding. All right, so I'm going to actually take that off, right, and my milk is going to be, you can even see the steam maybe, right? So now, if I were to just pour this straight into here, right, my egg would start to solidify. And so what's gonna, what would happen is I would get little chunks of scrambled eggs, right? However, instead, I want it to, like I said, remain a solid. And so to do this, Right, I'm going to make this, um, I'm going to slowly stir it, I'm sorry, I'm going to slowly add it while I stir the bowl, okay? Um, and so if you have somebody who's supervising, you might ask them to help you um, because it, this is a little tricky, right? So what I'm going to do is just slowly stream in my milk, add a little at a time, all right, mixing it as we go. Right. So after I get a little in, I can stream in a little more and continue mixing. And so what's happening is, is that I'm slowly bringing the temperature up of my egg. Okay. And so when you slowly add a heat to that egg, it stays a solid. I'm sorry, it stays a liquid instead of becoming a solid. Okay, if you remember the French omelet, you remember how it became, it was nice and creamy on the inside. That was because we kept mixing the egg over and over again instead of letting it sit and solidify. Okay, so that was kind of the difference. And that's what made it nice and creamy. Okay. So just slowly adding a little at a time. All right, okay. So I should have it all mixed together. And what I'm actually gonna do is sometimes I get a little milk on the sides of my pan, right? So I do like to wipe off the side of my pan. It shouldn't be too hot. It might be a little warm from the heat. Um, but I do like to wipe the sides so that when I go to put it back on the stove, I don't have milk cooking on the side. All right, so here we go. Um, so I still need to use this pan again. And so I'm gonna turn it back on. Six, seven, somewhere around there. All right, and then I'm going to actually add it back to the pan. All right, and because my egg has now um, been tempered, okay, um, it's now I can cook it at a higher heat because I've slowly brought the temperature up to. Um, to a higher heat, right, to help keep it soft, um, liquid, right, and so what will happen is, is that I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to stir this. Now, making custard is a little, you need a little patience, okay, um, but one thing you want to do is you want to be able to, you want to mix it the entire time, okay, because what will happen is, is if you don't, it will start to stick to the bottom of the pan, right, um, and then it will also start to clump up.
Okay, so you kind of know that this is um, that this is nice and thick, a by the texture, but also you typically get a bubble in the middle. It's not a huge bubble, um, but you might kind of notice that it kind of like comes up and just kind of pops the bubble a little, and that's when you know that it's um, ready, right? Sometimes I notice that. Um, when you guys make this in class, you don't get that bubble, but you do notice the thickness change. Um, and so you want to just kind of um, just look out for whichever one comes, you know happens. If you overcook custard, right, it tends to get grainy, right, and because you want a nice smooth custard. So I would um, just make sure that you pay attention to um, to the. Um, to, to how long you cook it for, right? Once it starts to get thick, that's kind of the time to take it off of the stove. One other thing you'll notice is that when it cooks, is that a lot of times this foam that's on top will go away. Right? Um, but like I said, this is, you know, this does require a little patience. Right? As I'm slow, as I'm cooking, I am kind of heating it up a little. Um, If I notice that it's getting too thick too quickly, I might turn it down a little. But that heat is definitely helping. You can kind of start to see that the um, the foam is starting to um, go away. Right, and I can definitely feel the change in the texture. All right there we go. I can feel it. I'm gonna turn this off actually. All right, take it off the heat, and then there we go. All right. There we go. And then we have vanilla custard. All right, and so now all you have to do is you have to um, put it into whatever container you're going to put it into. So I decided to put it into my little cups. All right, sometimes I'll use those. Sometimes I'll use a bigger cup glass. It just depends. All right. It doesn't really matter which kind you put it in. All right. And I'm going to spoon it in to my cups. And then I just um, let it go and sit. Now, one thing I will say is if you put some saran wrap on top and put it and make sure that it kind of um, seals in to make sure that saran wrap touches your um, custard, that will be very helpful because it will, um, it won't, um, you won't get that weird kind of skin at the top. Um, a lot of cooked dairy products um, kind of create this film or skin at the top. Um, and so if you kind of help remove the air, that's very helpful um, to prevent that top skin. All right, let's see. It looks like those two are not going to be enough, so I need to get a couple more out, which is fine. Right, so like it says, um, it makes four to two to four servings. All right, this one looks like it's going to make three, maybe. If I've done just a little less than each one. I probably could have made a fourth one, but that's fine. Okay. So like I said. Um, let it cool for a couple minutes, put the saran wrap on, put it in the refrigerator, and then let it cool down, and then you can um, eat it for dessert. All right. Thank you very much for cooking with me, um, and I will see you again soon. Thank you.